Hello, my name is George, George Yaroskevich. Don't worry about the last name. Now, I'm here to promote my forthcoming book, You Can Be the Next Einstein. What's it about? It's about encouraging young people like yourself to think about the possibility of becoming a theoretical scientist. I'm a theoretical scientist of a particular kind, known as mathematical physicist. You've probably never heard of mathematical physics. It's a rather specialist subject, but what I would like to show you in this book is that it is a very reasonable type of career to get into if you set your mind to it. And in this book, my objective is to convince you to think about the possibility of becoming a mathematical physicist. The book is aimed at all sorts of young people, people at school, people at college, and maybe some people who are a bit older, but still haven't yet quite worked out exactly what they want to do in their lives. What is mathematical physics? Well, let me give you an example of the sort of people who were great mathematical physicists. Albert Einstein, that's what the book discusses the, that person and his achievements in the field. And we've all heard of Albert Einstein. Another great mathematical physicist was Isaac Newton. More recently, we had the amazing example of Stephen Hawking. And I imagine, if you're anything like me, you will have seen on television that fantastic series, The Big Bang Theory. Well, Sheldon Cooper is a mathematical physicist. Now, most likely, you've never heard of mathematical physics as a subject, as a career. Let me reassure you, and I do this in the book, that mathematical physics will give you an excellent career. You'll have a reasonable income level. You might even get famous if you discover some fantastic law of nature. What do mathematical physicists do? Well, they don't do experiments normally. They sit and they think about the physical universe, about this absolutely wonderful universe that we live in. They try to understand things that affect our lives all the time. Um, what co keeps us on the ground? Well, it's gravitation, but that, can we understand what that is. Albert Einstein went a very long way towards giving a lot of insight into what was the cause of gravitational force. There were other mathematical physicists such as James Clerk Maxwell who developed the equations of electromagnetism and electromagnetism is the foundation of so much of our modern lives. You're watching this on some device, probably uh, an iPad or a mobile phone, maybe on YouTube, something like that. All of the technological developments that led to those devices and the sort of lives that you lead now, they were essentially created, the opportunities for them were created by mathematical physicists who worked very, very hard and eventually came to understand something about the laws of this fantastic universe of ours. Now, I'm addressing this talk to people perhaps at school, and I know a lot of you will be saying to yourselves, well, that guy's just going on, but I, I, I never liked mathematics. I was never any good at mathematics. I will do my best. I have got a whole chapter on this. I will demonstrate to you, if you read that chapter, I will demonstrate to you that if you put your mind to it, 
Give yourself a fair chance. Work carefully, slowly. Don't do it in a rush. You will be able to go to the furthest corners of the mathematical universe. And you will be able to discuss and deal with concepts such as infinity on a piece of paper in front of you that you will have worked on without anyone else telling you how to think. I'm pretty confident that I can lead you into revising your views about yourself as a mathematician. Mathematics and mathematical physics is not something about uh, passing an exam in two minutes or two hours or whatever. It can take time. Now, supposing you see some fantastic things, such as a footballer scoring a fantastic goal, and you say, well, I'd love to do that. Would you expect to just go out and join a, your national football team? No, you wouldn't. You would think, right, I need to train a little bit, maybe uh, five, ten years. I, I might have to look for the opportunities to join a club and maybe get spotted. In other words, you would be quite prepared to spend a lot of time in that goal. And it's the same with mathematical physics. If you set yourself up a goal, such as I want to become a mathematical physicist, you will be able to go a very long way. This book is aimed at all sorts of people, boys and girls. I don't need to tell you that your physical condition should have no bearing on this. Just look at the great Stephen Hawking. Uh, that was a man who had to go around in a wheelchair all his working life, but that did not stop him from creating wonderful, great ideas with his mind. In the book, I write about some very funny episodes that I encountered when I was sitting in the audience. One of them is about Stephen Hawking, and there are some other ones. If you get the book, I hope you'll be entertained. But I hope you'll also be encouraged to think better of yourself as a potential mathematician, potential scientist, and a potential mathematical physicist. So, hopefully you will read the book sometime and be encouraged. Whatever happens, uh, good luck to you in your chosen career. And as Spock would say, um, live long and prosper. How does he do that? Okay. Time to finish.